Another word that is core to the mission of Nebraska <clears throat> is inquiry. My life's work is centered around inquiry. My goal is to cure pancreatic cancer. Now, some people might think that naive, the dream of a child. But I know this, unless I'm willing to say that out loud, unless I'm willing to commit to it, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to stumble upon it by accident. It's also no accident that I ended up here in Nebraska. This is a place that's perfectly designed for unbridled inquiry. I am honored to hold the Nancy Armitage Presidential Chair in Pancreatic Clinical Research. Nancy succumbed to pancreatic cancer. Now, I didn't have the privilege of knowing her personally, but from what I understand, she was an extraordinarily compassionate and empathetic person, in addition to being a highly skilled nurse. Her loved ones and others who had also lost loved ones to this disease came together to provide the funding for this chair. They were all trying to derive meaning from loss, something I understand because I am too. I was just finishing my clinical training when my father was diagnosed with metastatic pancreas cancer. He was one of the first patients that I took care of as an attending physician. And so now, every patient I take care of is like taking care of my father all over again. This is personal. And you know what? It's also about settling a score. Caring for my father changed my perspectives, not only about how to study and tackle this disease, but also about how best to deliver health care to patients. Health systems are typically built to make it easier for the physicians and specialists to do their jobs. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but really they should be built primarily to help facilitate the patient's journey through the system. And the Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center provided the opportunity to do just that through our new Pancreatic Cancer Center of Excellence. So we've completely redesigned the clinic experience for patients. Rather than asking the patient to go identify the various kinds of specialties they need and setting up their appointments one by one, we bring all the specialists together in a room. So when a patient comes in for their initial appointment, they're first evaluated by one of the providers. And then we all congregate in an adjoining room, a broad team of clinical experts and researchers, and we come up with a comprehensive care plan for that patient after reviewing their data together in real time. That becomes transformative. And we know because we've measured, actually, these outcomes. About 30% of the time, the care plan that a patient might have come in with from an outside consultation is changed and refined, we think, for the better. So think about that for a moment. Whatever was going to happen to that patient in about one in three will be changed. So by the time the patients leave that same day, they not only have a comprehensive care plan, they have all of their appointments scheduled for them as well for the next several months across medical oncology, surgical oncology, radiation therapy, nutrition, physical therapy, even spiritual services. So what's the most challenging part of my day? It's actually in trying to bridge the gap between the two worlds of fundamental research and bedside care. So you have scientists on the one hand who are studying pathways and mechanisms of cancer, and physicians who, faced with the acute presentation of a disease, are scrambling to try to treat the cancer with the tools they have that day. The Pancreatic Cancer Center of Excellence geographically co-localizes the physicians and the researchers together in the same space. Believe it or not, that's revolutionary. That doesn't happen. So that together, the scientists and the clinicians can make better strategic decisions about what to study and also about what not to study. One of our mottos is stop doing stupid stuff. 
So even before we become smart, the least you should be able to ask of us is that we stop being stupid. So people treating the disease need to talk to the people studying the disease multiple times a day about what the real problems are, not what the abstract imagined problems are. This is inquiry at its finest, Nebraska style, because it encourages collaboration in such a common sense way. The Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center is one of the first of its kind to build integrated cancer care and research right into its architectural design. In the aftermath of my father's passing away, I also realized that we didn't have accurate experimental systems that actually modeled the disease we were trying to treat. We were studying pancreas cancer cells grown in a dish on plastic in the laboratory, and we would drip drugs onto them, and the ones that killed the cells, we would then try in patients. Exactly zero of those drugs worked in patients. So I spent several years learning how to genetically engineer the mouse genome so we could create a faithful recapitulation of the human disease in these smaller mammals. These mice now will develop the clinical spectrum, the syndromes, the signs, the symptoms of the human disease, and human pancreas cancer pathologists cannot tell the difference between the tissue samples from my small patients and the tissue samples from my larger patients. We also now get to see the entire evolution of this disease from the earliest changes to advanced disease, something that was never possible in patients because almost all of them present with end-stage disease. So we never had an understanding of the organizational logic of these tumors, how they're built, how they're constructed from the first changes, and all of the other cells that are called in to support it. If you're going to study if you're going to treat a tumor inside a patient, it seems to me that we should probably be studying it inside a corresponding animal and figuring out how to treat it in its native site. I can tell you that by doing that, we've learned that the textbook, only for about 150 years, got it all wrong. And I'm going to give you just one example. So because we're now able to finally ask the right questions in the right context, we have this deeper understanding of what makes a pancreas cancer so deadly. So one thing we've known for about 150 years is that a great many immune cells and fibroblasts infiltrate these tumors, and they build walls around them. They lay down collagen, the stuff of scars. And so a pancreas cancer is a white fibrous mass that's like a huge scar. Now, I was taught, we've all been taught, that this was the body's reaction to the growing cancer to try to contain it and wall it off, to prevent it from spreading. That's a lovely idea, except it's colossally wrong. All of that's being orchestrated by the tumor cell to protect it from its environment. The tumor constructs this mass, and it prevents chemotherapy from getting in. So think about that. The reason 100% of drugs failed that we tested by dripping them onto cells in a dish is not because they don't know how to kill those cells or they can't kill them if they get there. It's because the drugs never got into the tumor to begin with. OK. It's OK to fail if you've designed your very best experiment in the very best system you can think of. You just go back to the drawing board and you try again. What's not forgivable is to fail for a stupid reason, like never having gotten the drug into the tumor. Why do I know that? Because my mother reminds me of that every day. I found that the people here in Nebraska just want to get stuff done. So I'm new to this place. What you guys don't have a lot of time energy, or desire for is nonsense. So I feel like I can focus even more on the things that matter here. Now, at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and the Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center, we should, of course, be providing 
the highest quality of care available today. That goes without saying, but that's not enough. What we're really interested in doing, what you should ask of us, is that we define tomorrow's standards of care, that we develop higher standards, not only in healthcare, but also in agriculture, in information technology, in engineering. And that happens because we never stop inquiring why. We never stop asking why. I know this. At Nebraska, we will find tomorrow's cures.